this video, we're going to learn how to memorize the grade one braille system. Let's dive right in. Welcome back to another video guys. My name is Nelson Dellis. If you don't know me, I'm a four time USA memory champion. So I know a thing or two about how to memorize things quickly. And I love memorizing new things. Braille has always been super fascinating to me. I've always wondered how it works and if I could learn it pretty quick, not that I need it, I'm not visually impaired, but I wonder if I could learn it so then I could then teach it to those of you that actually need it and who need to learn it quick. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to memorize the alphabet in Braille, basically the approach that I took as a memory champion to encode this information in my head as quick as possible. I wanna be sensitive to the people who actually can't see this video, but who can hear it. So as best as I can, I will try to describe what I'm doing with these tennis balls and muffin tins so that people who can only hear this know exactly how to memorize it, just the same as those of you that can watch this video. But first, but first, but first. I think a little bit of history is in order. So back in the early 1800s, there was this kid, Lewis Braille, and he lost his eyesight in some kind of accident and realized he needed some way to communicate. So he actually came up with a more efficient system off of something that already existed called night writing not that kind, which was basically a military tactile code that had come up as a response from Napoleon who wanted his soldiers to have a means to communicate at night when they couldn't see anything. Lewis Braille, I guess, knew it and built off of it and created something that was way more efficient called the Braille system. Way to go, Lewis. All right, so the basics of Braille are this. Braille is based off of these three by two grids, three rows, two columns and there are six cells, we call them, in these grids. And in terms of these cells, they can either be raised or not raised. There are 64 possible combinations, including a configuration where none of them are raised, and out of those, you can make the alphabet. So for those of you that can't see what I'm showing you here, just know the numbering of all these cells, one, two, three, down the first column, four, five, six, down the second column. Grade one braille is actually super simple because as long as you know the configurations for letters A through J, basically the first 10 letters, you know how to do the rest of the alphabet because they're based off of those with minor adjustments. And even the numbers are based on those first configurations for letters. So if we can get those first 10 in our head, we essentially had it all memorized. And anybody can memorize 10 things, right? Yep. All right, so we just need one of these trays. We don't need all these balls. And in fact, the first 10 letters, A through J, it's only gonna be the top four cells. So cells one, two, four, and five. And we're just gonna memorize a short little story and each of the 10 letters will represent kind of a moment in this story or a word in the story. And hopefully it helps you remember the configuration of the raised or not raised cells. So the story goes, we start with an apple and suddenly a baseball bat comes out of nowhere and whacks this apple out of the way. After that action, you go into your car and you have to take a detour and exit onto the highway or whatever it is. As you're driving, you realize that you're out of fuel and you gotta get some gas. You go back to your house or your home, the little chimney there, and you go inside and you have a nice delicious ice cream. You feel like a big fat slob, so you go for a jog. That's it. Now, if you noticed, A, which was the apple, was just up in this top left corner, and that's what A is. It's just a raised cell one. Next, we had B, which was a bat, which was a vertical bat, and that actually takes up cells one and two. The letter C was a car, and you can imagine those two car wheels kind of horizontal. That's the top left cell, one, and the top right cell, four. Now, D made a detour, which kind of makes this angle shape going up and then left, and that takes up cells one, four, and five. Next, we had to exit E, and that was in the direction of a northwest arrow, which takes up cells one and five. Then we needed fuel, which is an F, and this literally looks like an F shape, which is cells one, two, and four. 
we had to get a gas canister, which is kind of the square object, which is perfect because it's actually all four of the top cells raised, which is one, two, four, and five. Next was our house or home. And remember that little chimney, and actually it's the letter H. It kind of looks like an H, which is cells one, two, and five. Then we got some delicious ice cream, which was kind of the opposite of E in the other direction, basically cells two and four. And then finally, the last one was J. It kind of looks like a backwards L, or if you thought of the guy running, his kind of tail leg was kicking out from behind him, kind of looks like this configuration, which is cells two, four, and five. And that's it, you have the first 10 letters of the alphabet. And with those, you can actually get all the rest of the letters. That is it, my friends. Whoa, 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 Nelson, what about the other letters? Well, here's the beauty of Braille. So the next 10 letters, K through T, are the exact same representations as A through J, except you have an extra cell raised in position three. So K, for example, is just A, but with the added cell three raised. Uh, B is the same as L, yeah. C is the same as M, Ooh. and so on, but just with that added cell three raised. Oh. Now, that'll take you through the next 10 letters, K through T. What about the remaining six letters after that, U through Z? So get this, U through Z are the exact same as A, B, and C, and so on, just with the cells three and six raised. So U is A, but with those extra cells three and six, and so on, you get the idea. The one exception is W. Apparently the French hated the letter, so they had to add it later and it gets its own representation. Cells two, four, five, and six. Basically, it just looks like a sideways W. What about numbers? Well, zero through nine, it uses the same cell configurations as A through J, where one is the same as A, two is B, three is C, and so on and then J is zero at the end. Now, how do you tell if you're dealing with a number or a letter? Well, if you get this configuration, you know that the next thing that's gonna come up is a number, not a letter, so you can differentiate. And then when you get this configuration, you know that it's gonna return back to being letters. So for switching to numbers, you need to have cells three, four, five, and six raised, and then to switch back to letters, it's just cells five and six. That's it. Really, that's all it is. Guys, one thing you wanna keep in mind, right? Because knowing those 10 letters is great, right? You know, A through J, but you wanna be quick at being able to tell what the other ones are in reference to those 10 that you already know. Knowing that A maps to K maps to U, just with the extra raised cell in three or three and six is super useful because essentially all you're doing is if ever you see that cell three is raised, you know it's in that second set of letters from K to T. And if you see that both cells three and six are raised, then you know it's U through Z, except for W, which is its own weird bastard case, right? So. To do that, here's an easy way. We know our story, we have those 10 things, the apple, the bat, the car, all that stuff. What if we just add a little mnemonic to that story that helps us remember what A maps to, what B maps to, okay? I've done it for you, you're welcome. A is an apple. If you can remember that this A goes to AK University, meaning, I don't know, there's a university that is just got students that are in the shape of the letter K. Just a bunch of Ks, running around a university. It's a K university. The bee is a bat. Imagine that the bat loves bees. All right, so B love, B L V. B maps to L, maps to V. The next one is car. So you have C M X. I think of like a car. I, in America, at least, we have this place called CarMax where you can sell your cars. Think of C, Max, Car, Max. The next one was Detour, and D maps to N, maps to Y. So I have deny. Denied. So imagine taking this detour and you kind of get denied. Maybe you try to get onto this highway, right, to the exit, but you get denied. Then you have an exit. E maps to O, maps to Z. So I have like this EOS sound there. So maybe that's like E-U-Z, E-O-Z instead of easy. But I don't know, maybe the exit is the E-U-Z way out. <laughs> so stupid. Now the rest of these associations are from the first set or the second. So F maps to P. So I can imagine when I'm filling up my fuel, right? Fuel was F. I fill her up. So that P sound, FP, so F maps to P. For the gas canister, we have G mapping to Q. So you can just remember GQ. Maybe this plastered on the front of this gas canister is G a GQ magazine. The house H maps to R. So I think of like hair, HR. So maybe this house has a bunch of hair on top of its roof or something. I maps to S, so that's like is. So maybe it's like is scream instead of ice cream. And then finally, J maps to T. So I think of like a jet. So imagine the guy running, going for a jog after he's 
done jogging, he jets off like super fast. And that's it. So now if I say, you know, what's K, you know that K maps to A, you know, also U, they're the same, but K is from that second set. So it looks like A, but it has that raised cell three. If I talk about P, right? I know it was fill her up, right? Fill her up the car with fuel. So that was F. So F looked like an F, but now it's got that extra cell raised three because it's P. All right, so let's do some examples. I'm gonna have four muffin tins here with some different configurations of tennis balls. And we're gonna try to read through Braille what this four letter word is saying. For those of you that can't see this, I'll describe what cells are raised in each of the four muffin tins. Let's go. Okay, so for those of you that can't see this, the first character has cells one raised. The second has cells one, two, three, and four raised. The third letter has cells one and five raised. And then the final letter has cells one, three, four, and six raised. I'll give you a second to try and figure out what that reads as. That's apex, A-P-E-X. Our next word here starts with one and four. The second letter is cells one. The third is cells two, three, and four. And then the final letter is cells one, two, and five. What does that read as? It's cash. All right, let's do one more for good measure. So the first letter is cells three, four, five, and six. The second letter is cells one. The third letter is cells five and six. And then the fourth letter is cells two, four, five, and six. What does that read as? Well, it was a trick. So really what this reads as is one W. You got me. That's it guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was useful. I really, I know this is fun to learn, but there's a real serious use case here. And I hope those of you that are watching that actually need it, actually learned it. And this video was very helpful for you. Please like, consider subscribing. This year is gonna be fun. I've got tons of ideas and projects coming up that I wanna share with you on this channel. So please stay tuned and make sure to hit that notification button so you know exactly when I post a new video. And bonus, uh, I think I'm gonna be start streaming on Twitch. What will I be streaming? I don't quite know yet. Uh, maybe playing some video games, maybe building some memory palaces, both with video games and not, maybe even memorizing and working on some of my projects. You can kinda get a little more of a glimpse inside of what I do when this camera shuts off. 2021, baby.